out of frustration. Yeah. Hello and good was. morning. Thanks for watching WNC. And today on this Tuesday, I'm Stephan Chase. I know I was affected by that for uh -huh. a minute, but finally looks like most of that is restored. Yeah. But we'll let you know more about that in just a moment. First of all, Emma Wright is live in the studio this morning with a long list of charges a Fayetteville teenager is set to face in court today. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Kristen Ketchell, who's in for Alyssa Corfont. Sounds like another cloudy forecast, huh? It's Mike and Stephan. All right, Kristen, sounds great. Thanks so much. It's 432 now. We begin with a developing story that impacted thousands of our viewers. Yeah, we're talking about the massive service outage affecting Verizon Wireless. Time now, 537 in Johnson County. Authorities are searching for the person who shot a man in Smithfield. It happened around 2 yesterday afternoon near the intersection of Midway Street and 2nd Avenue. Police say they found 45-year-old Adolphus Bryant with gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. If you've got any information, you're asked to call police. Fayetteville Police Department is getting federal funding to buy more body cameras. The grant from the Department of Justice requires departments to create a training policy before purchasing cameras, as well as a plan to store the data. It's part of the president's goal to increase the number of police body cameras by 50,000 over the next three years. And we were reading an article this morning. That's one mm -hmm. of the things. Most departments that have these don't even have a policy on how they're used. Right, right. But, you know, there are also are surveys and research that shows that it helps to cut down on excessive yeah. force by police officers and also encourages civilians to act right. I thought that was the yeah. key point. You know, you got to act better when, exactly. <laughs> when, when you, those you're on camera. Are on. That's right. Good. Welcome back to WNCN Today. I hope you're having a great Tuesday morning in the Weather Center with meteorologist Kristen Ketchell. Coming off this hot weekend, you know, it was a nice respite yesterday. Sounds like we get yeah. through today and we get some more of that sunshine a tomorrow. A little bit huh? of sun tomorrow. Like today it. we're still kind of locked under yeah. that layer of clouds like we did see yesterday. Today around 76. I'll be back with your forecast for the rest of the week coming up in just a few minutes. Mike. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. We appreciate that. Mass robberies on the beaches of Rio de Janeiro are causing panic amongst tourists. TV stations yeah. caught some of those oh, attacks on camera. Suspects ran through the crowd stealing cell phones, necklaces, and other valuables. Rio police said they have increased the number of officers and helicopters patrolling the beaches during the weekend. All right, time to dream a little bit here. A vessel believed to be the world's largest super yacht is out on the sea this morning. The ship is reportedly 153 yards long and its masts are 295 feet high. The final name of the three masted yacht has not been revealed to this point, but some believe the owner is a Russian billionaire. The boat is designed to accommodate 20 guests and a crew of 54. The yacht has been under construction in the German naval yards in Kiel for three years. Wow. Time now, 542. Former CIA Director David Petraeus is headed to Capitol Hill. Still to come, we'll let you know what's on his agenda. Plus, a raccoon is becoming an internet sensation. Yeah, later, where this furry visitor shows up every single day and knocks on one woman's door. GOP presidential hopeful Ben Carson may not be suffering any visible damage after comments that he made on Meet the Press on Sunday. Carson is refusing to back off the comments that a Muslim should not be president. His campaign is reporting strong fundraising, even more than 100,000 new Facebook followers. And one GOP strategist says Carson won't lose any Republican primary votes for taking that position. Republican presidential hopeful Marco Rubio made a stop in North Carolina on Monday. The Florida senator met with voters at a restaurant in Charlotte. He also had a private fundraiser as well two weeks ago. You may remember that presidential candidate Jeb Bush visited Garner, where he called for sweeping tax changes. All right, you don't want to miss this story. Raccoon has gone viral in Florida. Roxy the raccoon is what they're calling her. Visits a Sarasota woman every single day, and it's happened for the past nine months. She goes to the glass door, begs for food. Roxy first steals the woman's cat food, grabs a rock <laughs> from the garden, and knocks on the door for more food. Nearly two million people have watched this video. That woman is Susie Chin, yeah. says sometimes... She, you know, she'll throw rocks back in the yard, but yeah. but Roxy will throw the rocks back. Hey, I need food. <laughs> and that's sad right there, too. That is so annoying. Isn't it unbelievable? She's trained, though. You know, trained better than a lot of dogs that I've come right. across. You know? that Roxy's is true. smart. She is yeah, smart. But raccoons raccoon. are kind of like that. I had that issue in Missouri where I got rid of my dog food out mm -hmm. there, but they keep coming back. They're like, yeah. hey, yo, where, yeah. where's the food, man? <laughs> Free so, food. Yeah, anyway. Right <laughs> anyway, where's the sunshine? That kind of We had a yeah. great weekend. It's kind of disappeared a little you bit. You know, Monday we had a case of the gloomies yesterday yeah. because we did see the gray skies sticking around. Today we are going to see more clouds out there, but the good news is there is some sun in the forecast. Hey, this is Wesley Snipes. You're watching WNCN. Okay now, break for buses. 
Actor Wesley Snipes helping spread the message to keep kids safe this school year. You can help too on social media. Share our stories and use the hashtag Break for Buses. Snipes' new action series, The Player, premieres right here on WNCN Thursday night at 10 o'clock. Stefan talked to him, and he's just smooth. And, he is, and, and he never ages. He, we believe he's been cryogenically frozen <laughs> to not age. But anyway, that's going to be a good interview. Looking forward to that. All right, today is the deadline to have kids vaccinated for new shot requirements that went into effect in July. Durham County Department of Public Health held a vaccination clinic yesterday. The free clinic was offered for students meeting certain requirements. The new and modified requirements include meningococcal, tetanus, diphtheria, whooping cough as well. As of Friday, more than 500 students in Durham still needed those shots. If the kids don't get vaccinated, now they could get suspended from school. Heads up this morning, today through Friday, the Durham County Department of Veteran Services office will be closed. We want to stress, though, that the closing does not affect the Durham VA Medical Center, so keep that in mind this morning. Well, one prayer has been answered for a St. Louis boy living with a brain tumor. He gets a chance to meet Pope Francis. Doctors diagnosed 12-year-old Brett Hobrick with a brain tumor last year. The seventh grader went through rounds of chemotherapy and radiation while still attending school. With the help of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Hobrick received tickets to see Pope Francis when he comes to Philadelphia. Hobrick says the trip and his recovery are a blessing. I appreciate how God like gave me the recovery. Like he gave me such a good recovery. Like a lot of kids don't have that. Yeah, you gotta love his yeah, positive spirit. Yeah, what a great spirit. perspective. Wow. Old Pope Francis will deliver a mass in Philadelphia on Saturday. Check this out. A moose on the loose in New York will soon be back where it belongs, the forest. Authorities <laughs> in Troy say the eight-foot-tall moose swam across the Hudson River and took a stroll through town. Wildlife officials were able to tranquilize the moose. No one, including the moose, was hurt, fortunately. What a sight to see. I know. Those moose are gigantic. <laughs> All right, it's 6.55. Here's some news that you need to know before you head out the door this morning. Pope Francis is expected to touch down on American soil this afternoon. He'll spend six days in three U.S. cities, starting in D.C., then heading to New York and Philadelphia. Durham's Mayor Bill Bell and his wife Judith will be attending the invitation-only ceremony for the Pope at the White House tomorrow. And today, House lawmakers in North Carolina expected to discuss a plan that would reform the state's Medicaid system. The plan would give people with Medicaid a choice of networks to provide their coverage. It could be from a more corporate system or from a provider or a doctor-led entity. Today, a 17-year-old scheduled in a Cumberland County courtroom facing multiple felony charges of sexually exploiting a minor. The Sheriff's office says Mark Adair used Twitter to meet his victims and then convinced them to send him sexual images. Back to breaking news from overnight now. An old Durham Road in Chapel Hill is now closed, still closed. We're taking a live look at the area right now there uh, and electricity in that area is still affected after a tree fell overnight, knocking down those power lines. You can see the utility crews there still working to clean up the mess and also to restore power to the neighborhood there. So hopefully they can restore the power in the next uh, few minutes possibly yeah. hours. We'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, let's get a final check of our forecast. It's got some clouds, but there's some sunshine at the end of the there tunnel. Is there is some sunshine <laughs> on the way for tomorrow, which is nice because tomorrow is the first day of fall. But for today, we are still going to see some clouds out there, 76 degrees, a very small chance of an isolated shower here as we head through this morning into very early this afternoon. Tomorrow, though, looks mostly dry, 78 degrees. And then we're tracking a coastal low pressure system, which will move inland, bringing us a little bit more rain Thursday, Friday. Friday into Saturday. Temperatures stay relatively cool right through the start of next week with Monday's high temperatures still 75 degrees. So we are going to be watching for more rain to arrive here as we head to the end of the week, but at least for the next couple of days, things not looking too bad. And if we uh, take a quick check on your morning traffic this morning, we've got a live picture here coming your way from I-40 at the Clayton Bypass. Typical problem spot that we see. Traffic volumes are picking up. Use some caution on the roads out there this morning. And patience, mm -hmm. especially if you're in that area. <laughs> Thanks exactly. everyone for watching WNCN Today. All right, today's show is next. So we hope the good news is yours, everybody.